I'm Matt. I'm Carrie. We are the Stagmer Brothers of Baltimore Knife and Sword. We're going to be building some of your favorite weapons, and some weapons that you've never seen before. This is Man at Arms, Reforged. I don't know about you guys, but when they announced that there was going to be an animated series of Castlevania, I was pretty excited. I grew up playing the original Nintendo video game, and there's a lot of cool weaponry, a lot of nice fight scenes in it. In this episode, we're going to be making Alucard's Heirloom Sword. This is his favorite sword, and historically, this sword would have been considered an s -talk. It has a very thin blade, very long, very lethal for both slashing and piercing. So we're going to be forging this blade. It's going to be awesome. For the guard on this sword, we're going to do something we don't always do, which is we're going to almost completely turn it on a lathe. Even though this does not have a completely round form in the end, I'm going to start this way because we've got these nice peaks in a lathe turn section. You're going to see it basically as round objects that are turned. Sometimes you're going to see some faceting, and Matt's going to make some decisions how he's going to lay that out. But I'm going to get that basic form done for him. It's going to be lathe turned on both sides. The center block, which will be round, will take to the mill. We'll cut it flat and make the slot for the blade to go through and things like that. Matt will get into it and get it completely right. I finished the form on the lathe and went through and polished this piece, it needs some faceting work. Matt's going to be able to do this on the smaller wheels on the sander. He'll go through, create this flat surface, and then repolish. For this heat treat, we're doing something a little different. Normally you always see me or someone else rough grind the blade before we actually do the heat treat. In this case, we're taking the blade straight from being forged right to the heat treat. And the real main reason for that is to try to keep it as straight as possible. This is a long, narrow blade. We don't really want to grind too much material off of it and risk a chance of warping that'll be a real pain in the butt to fix afterwards. So instead of having nice soft material to grind on, we're going to put in the extra effort to make sure this stays nice and straight.
fairly large piece of steel, Tanner begins cutting the pommel. It's going to be made in two separate sections. The primary reason for this is Matt's going to come back and do the faceting on the lower piece. While it could be done all on one piece, it'll be far easier if there's two and we can then put them together. pommel pieces that Tanner turned on the lathe. The next step is to take this piece, which I'm calling the either collar or the rondelle piece, and just add facets to the top of it. And then I'm gonna change the big wheel out so a really small wheel to get on the inside and add facets to that. All right, we've gone through heat treated and now tempered this blade and I have to go through reprofile the tip and start grinding on this. Now what I'm looking for is what we're calling a diamond cross section, which I do on a rapier on a regular basis. Also gonna do a distilled taper, which means it's gonna be thinner towards the point than it is towards the guard. So for the overlay on this sword that goes down the center, it sits on the guard, bends, goes down the blade, has a fair amount of different height changes, and then you see the cross kind of down the center of the blade. Maybe it's an etching, maybe it's right on the surface. We're going to create it all as one piece in 3 16 Rather than using the CNC plasma table, I'm going to use this milling machine, mainly because the milling machine will give me sharp corners. I've already cut one out. You can see how pointy it is. It gets down pretty small in here, and the cross has got a lot of detail in the form. So I'm going to cut the second one out so that we've got both sides of the piece. And then I'm going to hand them over to Matt. He'll attach them to the guard and grind a bunch of different form. And we'll get it laid over the guard and blade, and then be able to polish the whole piece out. All right, Bill did a great job hogging off a lot of material doing the rough grinding on our blade. It's now time to move on to the finish grinding and then onto the polishing. He was using a 24 grit belt. I'm gonna start with a 60 grit, move on to an 80, 120, 220, and then our final polish will be a scotch bright. Now, the edge wanders just a little bit in some spots, so you're gonna see me start off by taking material off just to get that edge properly aligned on both sides. Then I'll move on to actually doing the bevels. Now when I do the actual bevel grinding, you're gonna see that I'm doing something kinda of unique. I'm not gonna just do straight up and down passes. I'm gonna be going at 45 degree angles both left and right. And the reason for that is I wanna to try to get these bevels as perfectly flat as possible. And when you change your angles up when you're grinding, you're getting all the little dips and grooves sanded completely out, and then we move on to the actual polishing. Matt is now going to create the final form on these overlays. He's got to go through and grind and create different surfaces than the ones that I cut on the mill. It'll be quite different once he gets it fit to the blade.
Using the drawing dies on the iron kiss, Ilya now begins to cold forge the pipe. That's going to allow him to give some shape to the handle before we begin doing the detail work. Now that Ilya's forged our pipe handle to shape, I've gone through and almost polished it all the way out. But before I get it completely polished and smooth, I have to add kind of a loose spiral to the entire thing. And I'm gonna do that using a narrow wheel. With the surfaces cleaned up, we now polish the handle. When we first considered making this sword, we thought it was a rather simple piece. But once we got into the build, we realized there's a ton of detail on the hill, and every piece had to be polished. And though the sword blade looked very simple, it had to be ground just right to get the right look and to make sure it performs well. I think we all did a stellar job and created a sword worthy of being called an heirloom. Click here to subscribe or click here to watch more episodes. Thanks for watching Man at Arms Reforged. We need to know what you want the guys to build, so tell us in the comments below what weapons you want to see next.